This is a case of a 70 year old man who was on uh, Flomax. As you can see the pupil is not dilating at all. It remains in an undilated state despite maximal medical dilatation. Um, we are inserting Tripan Blue under the iris onto the anterior capsule. Note that we are injecting it under the iris if we don't do that, all you will get is an imprint of the pupil on the uh, anterior capsule. Once vision blue has been uh, injected into the eye, we express it from the eye with a gradual flow of viscoelastic from the area diagonally opposite that of the incision. In this way, all the vision blue exits from the eye cleanly together with the air bubble. At this point, two Y hooks are brought into the anterior chamber and the pupil is engaged at its pupillary margin and stretched quite vigorously until it almost bumps into the angles of the opposing ends of the eye. It's done on four points of the iris. after which the eye is filled with a viscoelastic. My preference in these cases is viscoat and the pupil as you can see is now of a more manageable size. The eye is stabilized in the, with the left hand using the Banaji eye lock which is both a globe stabilizer as well as a phaco chopper. It's a double-ended instrument as you can see the eye lock keeps the eye in position whilst the rexus is affected. These cases tend to have fragile anterior capsules which also will tend to wander into the periphery into the zonular area creating for a zonular dehiscence and the possibility of untoward incidence during surgery. If the anterior chamber collapses and the rexis becomes difficult to do, do not hesitate to fill the anterior chamber with viscoelastic and continue your rexis as before. You will see here that that is exactly what happens. The anterior chamber is shallowing and the rexis is not proceeding according to plan. So we fill up the anterior chamber with viscoelastic, put the anterior capsule on stretch and then in a few moments finish the capsular axis. Now the capsular axis is round and intact along the full circumference of its periphery. A little viscoelastic is burped out of the anterior chamber to allow for an easy fluid wave to pass across the equator of the lens and up through the contralateral equator on the other side. My preferred instrument for hydrodissection is the Chang hydrodissection cannula. There's slight decompression of the lens as it moves forward and this allows for the full flow of uh, fluid right across the lens. A bimanual um, nuclear rotation is now carried out and you can see that the nucleus is rotating easily, safely and effectively within the bag. After the FACO is over, the eye is again stabilized with the eye lock and the lens is inserted easily into the capsular bag. Without the eye lock in place, the eye would move in an unmanageable way. Using the chopper on the other end of the eye lock, the lens is now rotated into the bag and the operation is effected in a safe and timely manner. I hope you have enjoyed watching this video. Thank you.